In this video, we're going to show some examples of how we can use IDEO extension classes to add code into your app. I'll be using Mongoose 902. One of the goals of Mongoose is to allow you to build your app without the need for coding, but when you do need to add code, it's simple and you're able to use standard tools and technologies. We're able to add code into the client with form scripting. We can add code into the application database by using SQL triggers and stored procedures. Mongoose doesn't directly assist with this, but we can define a method on an IDO that's mapped to a stored procedure we create. We can add code into the app server by using IDO extension classes. The code is written in the .NET language of your choice, compiled into an assembly, and uploaded via the IDO custom assemblies form, and stored in the objects database. Mongoose takes care of deploying and calling your assembly as needed in the app servers. We can add code that gets controlled via .NET event handling in a variety of locations in the course of the normal load collection and update collection processing of our IDOs. For example, if a user is running our form and clicks refresh, Mongoose will send a load collection request to the IDO runtime in the app server. We can have our code called after the normal SQL query is done and before the results are sent back to the client. This gives us the opportunity to do things like filling in calculated values. We can also define public methods in .NET on our classes and use those in a variety of ways in our app. We can call methods from the AES, invoke methods from external programs, and in WinStudio, we have a lot of possibilities. Now let's walk through a few examples of using IDEO extension classes in the issue tracking app we build in the Introduction to Mongoose video series. For IDEO extension class development in Mongoose 902, we'll need Visual Studio 2012 or newer, .NET 4.5.1, and we'll need to download the Mongoose assemblies from the portal. On the portal, download the IDEO EXT FW assemblies, which is in the resource section under the Mongoose Fundamentals tutorial resources. Save the zip file to a folder you can access from Visual Studio, then extract the contents to the same folder. Now we can create our project in Visual Studio. The type is class library, then name the project. In the Solution Explorer, let's rename class1.cs to issue tracking, then respond yes to rename the class throughout. Add references to the Mongoose assemblies we downloaded. Then we can add some using statements for Mongoose functionality. We want to derive our class from IDEO extension class, we can use IntelliSense to help us with the syntax here. It'll default like this. Save and build the project. We've got our skeleton set up, so let's create some .NET code that fills in a calculated property value. This is one example of using mongoose.net events, which we use in order to get control of your code as mongoose is calling through the IDEO runtime, specifically load collection and update collection. On the customer's IDEO, Let's add a new unbound property named UB issue count. The data type is string, column data type is care, length 50, initial value 0. Then with the customer's IDO selected, click properties, select the UB issue count property, then we can make it read only, and then add the label string ID S issue count, justify left, default value 0 then save and unload the cache. Now let's add that property to the customer's form by dragging it on from the collections tab. I'm also going to change the color of the font in the edit to red so we can see it more easily as we change our code. Save and close the form, then reopen it. Then we can execute filter in place in run mode and we see the issue count is zero. Now let's add a post load collection event handler to populate our issue count IDO property. Mongoose has classes that encapsulate the payload being processed through the IDEO runtime, in this case, load collection results. Once you're done with the code, save and build. Now we need to import the DLL into our app. To do that, open the IDEO custom assemblies form, then create a new assembly named issue tracking, then click import assembly and locate the DLL on your machine. Also import the symbols, then we can save and unload the cache. What we just did was save the assembly to the objects database. Note that since this is IDEO metadata, we have access as control and check-in check-out capabilities. On the IDEO's form, select the customer's IDEO 
and select our assembly from the dropdown. We'll also need the IDEO extension class name, which is issue tracking, and the namespace, which is also issue tracking. Remember to save the customer's IDEO, then we can close it. Unload the cache and reopen the customer's form, then press F4 to execute filter in place. What we now see is that instead of zero for all of our rows for UB issue count, we see the row index from our code, proving that our code executed post load collection. After we sent the SQL select statement to the database, it came back to the IDEO runtime where it called our assembly. That updated issue count was sent back as an XML to the client. Before we move on from this example, I wanted to show a much more efficient way of doing this query. We could create a new IDEO property on the customer's IDEO that's derived. The data type is long integer, the column data type is in bare care. Then in the expression field, we can use some pseudo SQL code. Then we just need to bind the issue count edit to that derived property. This is a much more efficient way of doing our query, but since we're demonstrating IDEO extension classes in this video, we wanted to show that method too. Okay, now let's look at an example that uses the database encapsulation provided by Mongoose. Here we'll use the straight SQL wrapper classes we provide to actually count the number of issues for each customer in the row. Mongoose also has classes that allow us to call into the IDEOs to query or update data or invoke methods. Before we start on this example, we need to add three more using statements at the top because now we're doing SQL from our code. For the case in which the client hasn't included the UB issue count property, we'll add a try catch at the bottom. Save the code and build. What we did in our code was use the Mongoose application DB class to get a SQL connection to the database and then execute a SQL query to get the number of issues for each customer ID to provide an actual issue count. Using the IDEO custom assemblies form again, we'll re-import the DLL and PDB, save and close, then we can unload the cache and we can test our customer's form again with our new code. Our edit component now shows how many issues each customer has. Now let's move on to another major way to use extension class code. Instead of .NET event handlers on Mongoose events, we can code public.NET methods, which are then leveraged as IDEO methods. These methods can in turn be used in a wide variety of ways in a Mongoose app. On the IDEO methods form, we can see the four types of methods, stored procedures and .NET code, which do or do not return result sets. We'll walk through some simple examples of standard.NET and collection load.NET methods, then go over a few examples of how those can be used from within your Mongoose app. This first example takes an input string, does something to it, and returns it as an output. I'll copy and paste this code outside of the post load collection method, then we can save and build, then re-import the DLL and PDB again. Once you're done, save and unload the cache. Now in the customer's IDEO, we need to provide some data describing the method. With the customer's IDEO selected, click New Method. The type is hand-coded standard, then we can copy and paste our method name. Click OK. Now click Methods and add the parameter types. Input parameter, sequence 0, user data type, BSTR, data type care, true, false, false. The second one is output parameter, sequence 1, BSTR, care, true, true, false. Save and press Ctrl U to unload the cache. For testing these next examples, I'll make some copies of forms so we can play around with them. Now let's add a button to our copy of the customer's form and name it btn call method. We want this button to generate the event call IDO method. We want an event handler type of method call for this event. Then we can select the customer's IDO and the method. Note that the parameters are filled in for us, but we want to edit them a bit. The first one is a string. The value type is property. Then we can select our name property. The second one is also a string. Then check the output box. This one is a variable. 
and the value is test. Click OK back to the form, then create an edit component on the form and bind it to variables.test. Then save the form and enter run mode. Query some data, then click the button to test. What we did was took customer A and sent that in, called our code, tacked it on to the output, the output was mapped to the variable, and the variable was bound to the edit component, so we see the value of our output parameter of our method displayed in the edit component. Another way a standard IDO method can be used is in WinStudio as a validator. Now change the code to match this, so that it has a very simple validation algorithm. Save and build, then re-import the assembly, then unload the cache. Now in WinStudio, we need to create a new validator. The type of validator is method call. Click the ellipsis on parameters and select the customer's IDO. Then select the method from the dropdown. Click on method parameters and create a new method parameter that's a string. The value type is component and for the value we'll pass in the name of the component we're validating as percent one which will make this reusable. Then we'll create another method parameter that's a string, an output, the type is variable, and the value is test. Click OK back to the validator properties dialog and create a new error message string m test method and change the string value to v parenthesis test close parenthesis. This shows we can use the interpreter in a variety of ways. In this case, the output parameter, which will be mapped into a variable called test, will basically be what is shown if a validation error occurs. Click OK and save. Open our test form and create an edit component. I'll name it test method validator edit and turn validate immediately to true. Click the ellipsis on validators and add the validator to our component. Then click the Edit Parameters button and enter the name of the edit component. Then save. If there's a validation error, this component will display its value. Reopen and test by typing strings into the new edit and then pressing Tab. If you type invalid and tab out, we'll see the validation error. Okay, now on to our last example. As part of the approach to allow us to write code for the exception cases, we normally want to use the metadatabase capability provided by IDOs to query data, but we can override that in certain cases. Earlier we showed how we can alter the implementation of the default IDO load collection by adding extension class code, which affects all users of the IDO. Mongoose also provides the ability for a given use of an IDO to replace the default load collection query capability with our own code. This is called a custom load method. Custom load methods are IDO methods that return result sets implemented either as a stored procedure in the database or as .NET IDO extension class code, which is what we'll show right now. Start by making a method. This is obviously not a real life example, but you can construct a result set in code however you want. I'll paste in the code at the end of the previous method. Our result set will be hardwired two rows of customers, IDO 0 and 1, with the value of the parameter tacked on to demonstrate how parameter data is available for use in these kinds of scenarios. Again, let's save and build, then re-import the custom assembly. Make sure to save and unload the cache. Now on to the customer's IDO, add the new method definition. The type is hand-coded custom load method, then copy and paste in our method name. Click Methods, and we can fill in the parameters below. Input parameter, sequence 0, bstr, care, true, false, false. We want id, sequence is 0, and name with the sequence of 1. Close the examples form and then save and unload the cache. Open the examples form again and we want to change our method validator edit to a combo box. Then click the ellipsis on list source. The type is IDO method, select the customer's IDO, then select the IDO properties, ID, and name. The method name is example load method, then we want a new method parameter that's a string, 
the value type is literal, and the value is sum input. Click OK back to the form, then save and reopen the form, then drop the list. Now we can use this as a custom load method on a collection. First we need to enter design mode and create a secondary collection on customers. In the custom load method field select our example load method, then click the ellipsis on method parameters. Create a new parameter that's a string, the value type is literal, and the value is for secondary collection. Again, instead of the normal querying, the IDEO runtime will call this method to create the results. Note that our post load collection method will still be called. The exception will be caught when we try to update UB issue count and it isn't in the results. Save and close, then reopen the form. Now let's add a grid component and bind it to the secondary collection. We can save and close the form, then reopen it. Now we can bind the columns to the ID and name properties on the secondary collection. While we're here, let's add some captions to the columns too. Save and reopen the form. We can test by right-clicking the header of the grid and selecting Refresh. We completely bypassed the SQL query and got our data back. Well, we hope these examples gave you a better idea of what's possible with IDEO extension classes in Mongoose. For more tutorials and documentation, visit the Mongoose portal. For tech support, visit InforExtreme. And for general questions and comments, email mongoose at info.com.